Hello, this is Brian. I want to say thank you for tuning in to another YouTube video. It's been a few weeks since uh, I've recorded a video. I've been sick for the past uh, about three weeks and now finally feeling well enough to be able to um, do this video. So I want to say I apologize for uh, not having a recent video the past weeks. I think the last video that I made was on July 4th at the time of this recording. So I just want to say thank you so much for your patience with me. Again, I am feeling better now. Still not 100%, but I am feeling better. And I thank the Lord for His healing touch. And by the way, if you've not already subscribed to my channel, I want to encourage you, please subscribe to my channel. Very simply, click the subscribe box right below and make sure that you also click the notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time a new video is uploaded to my channel. And also too, if you like today's video, I would invite you to please give me a thumbs up and it would be greatly appreciated. And for the next few minutes, what I would like to do, I would like to share in regards to what is happening all across our nation. I think all of us can recognize that something strange is happening across this nation of ours. It was back at the end of June into the first part of July that people began to see at retail stores and restaurants and fast food places where a little sign was put up that said, please use correct change or correct the exact number or exact dollar amount of change or please use a debit or credit card. And this was due to a coin shortage. You know, that's what we have heard and what we have read. And uh, after seeing this happening all across the United States, it has really caught the attention of many people of where we are right now on the prophetic timeline. Now, what I would like to share in this video very simply is what I see from the Bible in regards to what all this is leading to. Now, I'm sure you probably have seen videos already from other individuals and also too, not just recently, but I'm talking about even in years past. Because anyone who follows Bible prophecy knows that this is all leading to a cashless society. I mean, that's the end game, is a cashless society. And then we find in the book of Revelation in regards to where it's going to be a mark that's going to be issued by this one world government that is led by a future one world leader known as the Antichrist. And I'll speak more about that in just a moment. But right now many people are really disturbed because cash no longer is being accepted at many retail stores or places along that line. They rather you use a debit card or credit card. You know, just a few years ago you recall where they made the change on the debit card and credit cards where you went from a swipe to inserting your chip. You recall that? And for that transition time period there, I would often ask the cashier, do I need to swipe my card or insert the chip? And you know, that was the common practice. And you know, during that transition, and there's still some places that you still got to swipe your card, but the majority of places that we see, you insert your card with this microchip that is on your debit card or credit card. And this is all for the sake of security. It's amazing how things are packaged where we as individuals will accept what is being said. And I understand when it comes to security, especially our finances. But it's also amazing how quickly we adapt to change. Initially, many people, we can be resistant to change. And I don't think anyone really likes change. I know sometimes we like change, but you know, as a whole, many people resist change. But it's amazing to see where we are right now in the United States of America, how there's so much change that has taken place in so many different facets that people now are just, just rolling with it. And again, I'm not going, going to go into all the coronavirus type thing. I know we've heard so many things on television, on radio, on the internet. I mean, I think many of us like myself or, you know, with coronavirus, COVID-19, we're just fatigued with the terminology, we're fatigued with hearing about it and all that's going on. And they're saying that what could possibly happen in the fall. I mean, there's so many things that are going on. I believe there are more question marks right now than there are answers. So at the time of this recording, it's the end of July as we prepare to roll over into the month of August. And what the rest of this year holds, the year 2020, none of us knows. Now, if you're watching this video at a later time, 
later in the year, or maybe even the year 2021, if the Lord should tarry is coming. Again, I don't know where we're going to be at that time, but as of the time of this recording, there's a lot of question marks that we simply do not have answers to. This is a very volatile year, as we have seen, when it comes to what is happening with the coronavirus and what is happening with the riots. And also, too, of course, being a presidential year, a presidential election year, my goodness, the volatility that is happening right now, it is absolutely amazing. And as we go into the fall months of 2020, what's it going to be like? Again, none of us knows. But what I would like to share is in regards to what we're seeing right now with this cashless society or what it's leading up to. Because many people have questions in regards to what is happening. Now, what I'm going to provide today is what the Bible says. Everything else that you have heard and seen is basically speculation because we really do not know. I'm basing what I'm sharing today based upon what the Holy Bible says. We know what is going to happen based upon the authority of God's Holy Word. God tells us what's going to happen. You know, in the future, it's called prophecy. And prophecy is the writing of history before it takes place. And only God could write a book like this. This is why I know it's the Word of God, because only God can tell us what the future holds. So today, I want to be reading from the book of the Revelation. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, a very familiar chapter that many people who study prophecy already know where I'm going. But I want to read this to you. If you've never read this, you may have heard about it. But I want to read to you and show in the Scriptures where it is found. Revelation chapter 13. And I'm going to begin in verse 16, okay? So if you have your Bibles, and if you go to the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation chapter 13, it speaks in this chapter about a future leader that is going to be coming on the scene. You will find this at the beginning of chapter 13, that again how this future leader comes out of this multitude of people, out of these nations. And it talks about him and, and how, you know, the false prophet that will come alongside as well as the dragon Satan. This is known as the false trinity. Now we know that, that the Holy Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Well, the false trinity is Satan who is the dragon. Then you have the Antichrist who is known as the beast and also to the false prophet. This is the false trinity. So I wanted you to keep that in mind when you're reading and studying the book of Revelation, specifically chapter 13. Now I want to read to you as stated, verses 16 through verse 18, because there's going to be a one world government established in the future. And we're hearing and seeing talk about that now all the time. You've heard the phrase globalist or globalism. That is where everything is heading to right now is towards a one world government. And this future one world leader that in order to be a citizen, to be a part of this one world government, you must have this identification system. In order to do commerce, to buy, to sell, to trade, you've got to have this identification system somewhere stating that you are a citizen of this one world government that is coming in the future. Now let me just pause and say, I believe that we're so close to seeing this, this rising of this future one world leader as well as a one world government and economic system. But here's the, here's the part I want to also mention. I believe the church will not be here to see this take place. We will not know who the Antichrist is. We will not know. As you've heard me share in previous videos on this channel, that, that, in the, uh, that, that I'm looking for Jesus Christ and not the Antichrist. And I trust that you are as well. Now I recognize that others may have different uh, beliefs or perspectives than what I see from this Bible. You might be a mid-trib or post-trib. And look, I respect your view. This, is, this video is not to debate. Look, I understand you might believe that Christ is coming midway of the tribulation. Some might believe Christ is coming at the end of the tribulation with the rapture. But listen, I believe Christ is coming before the tribulation, that we are, that we are spared from the hour of trial, that we're not appointed unto wrath, that these last seven years, known as the tribulation period, is for the nation of Israel 
and not the church. And so, again, I can go in further videos on this channel, those other videos talking about that, but the main thing is to be ready. So let's read Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through verse 18. And here's what the Bible says. And he, now this is speaking of the Antichrist, that one world future leader, causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, some type of identification system, in their right hand or their foreheads. So you find here that in order to be a citizen of this future one world government, that you have to participate in this identification system. And now it's going to tell us what it would allow one to do. Verse 17, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So it says here in verse 17, that no man might buy or sell, save he, or accept that you have the mark. So you cannot do any kind of commerce unless you have this mark. And it also says the name of the beast. And again, we spoke about this earlier, that this is speaking of the Antichrist. And then it says, and the number of his name. Now the number six is indicative of man. We know that God created man on the sixth day. So we now find in verse 18, here's what the Bible says. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, or the Antichrist, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. In other words, six, six, six. Six hundred, a score is twenty, so three score is sixty, and six. This is the number of the beast or the Antichrist. So, basically what's being said here, that in this future one world government, in order to participate, to be a part of society, you have to receive a mark either on, the, on your right hand or in your forehead. Now, I don't think i got to convince you guys that people right now are being desensitized in regards to this in so many ways. I want you to think for a moment before you go into a doctor's office, sometimes maybe before you go into a certain retail store, but mainly a doctor's office. I've seen this quite a bit because I've been to the doctor these past weeks, and guess what they did? They placed a thermometer up to my forehead and did it. And immediately it tells them if I got a temperature or not. So we're already uh, being, uh, again, desensitized of having something put up to our forehead. I even have shared before on other social media in regards where a thermometer will measure the back of your palm, the back of your hand as well. Again, this is an illustration of what is coming. Identification, something here, either here, the right hand, or on the forehead. And we don't know exactly what it is. You know, some speculate it might be some type of microchip. It very well could be. But the mark of the beast has not yet been issued. I know sometimes people are wondering, are we in the tribulation period? Number one, we are not in the capital T tribulation, the seven-year tribulation period. We face tribulation, as Jesus said what happened in John 16, 33, small t, which means trials, difficulties, setbacks, frustrations, you know, storms in our life. We all face tribulation, but this is speaking of the great tribulation, the tribulation that is coming, this seven-year time period, the hour of trial, Jacob's trouble. That's what the seven years is about, the tribulation. So it's during that time the Antichrist, when he emerges on the world stage, will put forth this mark where everybody has to have this mark on the back of their right hand or on their forehead. Now, this might be your question. Okay, Brian. Why would anybody, why would anybody have any mark put on their forehead? Why would they do that? Well, the reason why, think about it, it's very simple. If you, I'm a very simple person. Everybody doesn't have a right hand. It says here, once again, that they will have a mark on their right hand. Again, it says it in the Scripture, verse 16, in their right hand or their foreheads. Everybody who's alive doesn't have a right hand. They may have been injured in an accident. They may have been born without a right hand or right arm. And so they, but look, if you are alive, guess what? You've got to have a head. <laughs> I mean, it's simply said. So we are seeing right now where people are being desensitized. So instead of holding up some thermometer to our forehead, it could be some type of digital scanner in the future. 
And again, we all know all the thing about the mask, M-A-S-K, that is going around right now. That you cannot enter into a store and you cannot purchase anything unless you have a mask, a M-A-S-K. There's coming a time that you cannot enter a store or buy anything unless you have a M-A-R-K, a mark. And that's where all this is leading to. Every bit of it, we're gradually, little by little, we're getting there. In fact, this year, it's almost as if the fast forward button's been hit. We've seen this for years with the technology, with all this happening. We've already seen how this very well was coming into place. But now we see where the fast forward button has happened. And now we find ourselves where people are being scanned before they even go into a store or maybe into a doctor's office. And now we're taking out our credit cards. We insert it and the chip is scanned. I'm just telling you, we are in that time. Because guess what? You might misplace your credit card, right? So let's just put that identification system on you. Again, it's going to be packaged in a way that people are going to receive it. Think for a moment. People are going to receive it. It's going to sound good on the exterior. But listen, what, what could be contained? It could give us, you know, it, when they scan it, it can tell where a person lives. It can say their medications, their medical history. It could also give to them um, their financial information. I mean, there'll be no more silver alerts. It could have a GPS on there. I mean, think of all the things with, with, with um, you know, protection against our nation and against the world. I mean, I'm just telling you, it's going to be packaged in a way that people are going to be running to get this mark. I'm telling you, that is where we are right now. Things are heading that direction. Now keep in mind, we are not in the tribulation period, but we are, I believe, so close to the coming of the Lord, known as the rapture of the church, which will then soon lead to what is called the tribulation period. But when it comes to a cashless society, again, the premise of this video is to talk about what, what the end game is. And I was doing some research, and it shows that 40%, 46% of Americans don't worry about carrying cash. As of October 2018, 29% of Americans never purchase with cash, and another 52% occasionally purchase with paper money. That means that 86% of Americans are largely paperless when it comes to their shopping. Isn't that amazing? That almost, that almost 86% of Americans are largely paperless when it comes to their shopping. So people are not carrying cash like they once did. Now everything is gone electronic. That is where we are. I've done past videos in regards, and you can see the link above, past video where I talk about technology in the last days and how that is where everything is leading to. And I do a more in-depth study and teaching on that, so I encourage you to check that video out. But right now with the increase in technology, just as the Bible says in the last days that knowledge would increase, that with all this increase in technology, it is rushing us to this time frame that we are currently in. Now with the cashless society, you look, the reason they're saying that right now there's a coin shortage is because of the coronavirus, right? They're saying because, you know, since there was a shutdown in the spring, that the currency was not exchanged like it normally is done. And also, too, that the mint was closed because, or, or scaled back because of the coronavirus. Let me tell you, money's been around a long time, and it's hard for me to believe that there's such a coin shortage right now that we're having to use electronic payment. It's all about tracking things, about what we do, what we spend, where we go. I mean, that's what it's all about. And so it's desensitizing the people. Now, based at the time of this video, again, I don't know what the fall is going to look like in 2020 or in the year 2021. If the Lord should tarry His coming, I do not know. You might be watching this video right now and things have changed. I do not know. I don't claim to be a prophet. I only share what the Bible teaches. But, Will we go back to a time where currency and coins will be freely used again and they will say you now can use it again? We might. I don't know. But it very well could be stating that, you know what? Let's just shift everything to a cashless society. There are countries right now that are doing that. Like, for example, like Sweden. They're already discussing about and already having almost a cashless society. So also it could be said that, you know what? You might can transmit the disease or spread this disease by currency, by coins, with the coronavirus. 
I mean, very well they could say this. They talk about how it can live on surfaces and, you know, all the stuff we're seeing with the mask and things like that. You know, back in, the, back in the winter of 2019 into the early part of 2020 in China, they were actually burning some of their currency and also doing a deep clean in their banks because they were afraid that this was a way that the disease was being spread. Who knows? It could be said that this could be a possible way in how the coronavirus could be spread. So in order for the safety of the nation and people around the world, we're no longer going to have cash. Could it happen? Yes, it could happen. Another thing, too, is also the debt that our nation is going into. You know, the stimulus packages that we're having to help uh, to keep money flowing in our, in our economy right now. We had one back in the spring, and now there's talk at the time of this recording passing another one sometime in August. Another stimulus package, once again, is to keep money flowing and currency flowing. But what is happening also, our nation is going into great debt. Great debt. I can't remember the trillions of dollars we are in debt, but you know and I know it's a lot of money. Well, it's not only our nation, but there's other nations around the world likewise that are in extreme debt. You know, this could be leading to what is called a global reset. I'm sure you probably have heard of this on other videos or read about this. A global reset where all the debt is forgiven, is forgiven and we start from scratch and there can lead to either a new currency or to a cashless society. What the exchange would be dollar per dollar based upon, I don't know. But very easily we could see where there could be a global reset because there's no way we're able to pay back the debt that this nation is in. So a global reset is very, very possible. So when we see all this cashless society talk and hear about it and what is happening, it's a very alarming thing. But to me it illustrates how close we are to the coming of the Lord. I want you to listen very closely. I believe that Jesus is coming and His coming is so very near. Now, I don't know when Jesus is coming. No one knows when Jesus is coming. On this channel, we will not set dates because I don't know. No one knows when Christ is coming, as stated. But I do believe by the signs that we see that the shadows of the tribulation right now, we can see happening right now. We see the events that will occur during the tribulation. We see right now what is occurring that can lead up very well to what will finally materialize during the tribulation period. And if you believe, like I believe, that the rapture would take place before the tribulation, I want you to think how close we are to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are so close to His coming, known as the rapture of the church. And I want to make this point as well. This year, 2020, has been a very odd, odd year. Very strange. And as you probably have heard and seen, seen on, on, on videos and on television and read, something is not right. Something is very strange in what's going on. Back in the spring, people were more open to it about flattening the curve. But here we are now, and I'm not saying the coronavirus is not real. I am not saying that. It is a real virus. But with all the explosion of what is happening through our media and what could be politicized, Things are very strange right now, what's going on. And we've got to be extremely careful. And I know as I spoke earlier about masks, and also too, when it comes to all the depression and all the fear and the worry and the anxiety that people are facing right now in our nation, as schools are nearing opening, some might be going back on campus, some kind of alternate type plan, some are going to be virtual, completely virtual online. Uh, with college campuses, what's going to happen with college sports, with football and basketball. Again, at the time of this recording, we just do not know. There's a lot of question marks as mentioned earlier. And so with all of this we see happening, and what's going to happen with the nation's economy and even the world's economy, we do not know. But if we think it's bad now, let me tell you, we haven't seen anything yet. The tribulation is going to be much worse. Now I pray by the grace of God we're not going to be here. I believe the rapture of the church is going to happen and the church is going to be, be caught up and taken away. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The Bible tells us that we'll be caught away to 
to meet the Lord in the air. stated the harpazo, the rapture of the church. But I believe we're so close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why we must be prepared. So if one thinks it's bad right now, can I tell you the tribulation, it's going to be absolutely awful. The Bible tells us that unless those days are shortened, that no one would survive, that the elect would be deceived. It's a terrible time that's coming upon this planet. And by the grace of God, to those who know Christ as personal Savior, we're going to be with the Lord, known as the rapture, and be at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then return at the end of the seven-year tribulation period, at the, at the time of the battle of Armageddon, and this is known as the second coming of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be doing future videos more about this, but I just want to encourage you today not to fear. The Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. The Bible tells us that fear has torment. And I know right now with all the question marks that we have that people are facing a lot of uncertainty. But I want to encourage you not to fear that God is with you. And the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? So what we're seeing right now happening in our nation and things are happening around the world indicates to us how close we are to the coming of the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. So my question to you is not are you a mid-trib or post-trib. That's not my question. My question is, are you ready? Are you ready for the soon coming of Jesus Christ? As stated, I believe Jesus is coming before the tribulation period. I am ready by the grace of God, not by my good works, but rather by the finished work of Christ on the cross. It's what Jesus has done. When Jesus says it is finished in John 19, 30, the work was complete. We cannot add or take away to that work that Jesus completed. The finished work of, his, of the work of salvation on the cross. What must we do? We must receive His finished work. We have to acknowledge that we are a sinner, that we are sinners, and that sin separates us from God. We got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and arose on the third day, and that He's coming back, and that He brought He is the atonement. His blood is the atonement for our sin, as He gave His life that we might have eternal life. We've got to confess our sins, as Romans chapter 10 says also, that we must confess that we are a sinner and that we, that we need a Savior and confess our sins and acknowledge that He is the Son of God, arose from the dead, and believe in our heart. And I'm grateful that God, through His Son Christ, has provided a way, John 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me through Jesus Christ. And we got to do it now. Not tomorrow, not next week, but you got to do it now because today's the day of salvation. None of us are promised tomorrow. Jesus could come. Jesus could come this very day. Yes, it might be 50 years from now. Yes, it could be 100 years from now. I don't believe it is. I believe it's so very soon. And who knows? We could be taken by the grave, by death. None of us are promised tomorrow as stated. We must always be ready. So I ask, are you ready? Are you prepared? I want to invite you to ask Jesus into your heart by praying, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Be the Lord of my life. I confess you as my personal Savior. I receive in faith the finished work that you died for me 2,000 years ago. And I need, I need your blood, your son's, your blood, Jesus, to cover me of my sins. And Father, I want to say thank you for forgiving my dear friend today of their sins. If they pray that prayer and believe in their heart, Confess their sins to you, Lord. We know, as the Bible says, they are saved. So, my friend, I want to say congratulations and welcome to the family of God. And again, below in the description box, you will find Bible scriptures. It's called the Roman Road to Salvation. Just read through those scriptures and it will help you as you come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you to get plugged into a Bible-believing church. And I want you to testify and tell others what Jesus Christ has done for you. As stated, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you've not already subscribed to our channel, I want to invite you to please subscribe to my channel by simply hitting the subscribe box down below and make sure you click the notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time a new video is uploaded. I also invite you to share this video as well. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That is always greatly appreciated. And again, thank you so much for watching these videos. It is such a joy hearing from people all over the world. God bless you all. Thank you again for watching. And remember to keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon.